Scott is a, is a cool guy. He's brought his uh, swagger to the gym. I'm looking forward to getting to know him better. Um, I've not um, had the privilege of spending too much time with him yet because we train at separate times most of the time. Uh, so when we overlap, I like to watch him. Um, he, he's a slick guy and uh, you know he's a very cool character. So I'm looking forward to watching him progress and watching him fight as well. Cheers. Uh, I'll jump in with one then. Um, now you're back at the Cold World camp. Uh, I imagine the vibes are really good. Obviously, everyone's back in the in the gym together. Um, is that sort of was it sort of to the end of your camp? Was that sort of a real motivating factor? The fact that you've got everyone back around you, everyone's got the same sort of goal um, to get back after coronavirus. Did that sort of motivate you um, coming forward to this fight? Yeah, it motivates you. Um, it's good because you know, that's the training team that I'm I'm used to having. Um we, we used to training for fights and it's me, Dave and we're working on, on different things and we've got Hopi there who's come in over the last year and, and you know helped out with sparring and it's a good atmosphere, like I said, the vibe's good. Um so to have you use your team and, and going into a fight um after COVID lockdown to be able to have your usual camp um a good stint at the gym with your usual camp is great so yeah we, we all motivate each other I don't think motivation is something that we lack in the gym uh, so you know it's business as usual and we, we've cracked on and done a good job I'll jump in I've got a few questions um, Ames here for Boxing News TV smash that like and subscribe button because today I'm giving you a thrill in the form of Jordan Gill uh, Jordan firstly are you shaving the hair before your fight or are you keeping the bonnet that you got right now I'm not trusting myself with a pair of clippers in this hotel. <laughs> um, so I'm keeping it and uh, level last if you keep in, keeping it. And why, why have you kept it? And the reason why is because I've not wanted to risk anything. You know, I thought if I get COVID from uh, a barber, from going into the barbers, then I'm never going to forgive myself if I have to pull out the fight because, you know, I, I, I've uh, failed the test. So, you know, I've not taken any chances. I'm keeping the hair as a, as a tribute to lockdown. And uh, like I say, I'm getting mixed reviews on the hair, but it's probably the thing that's uh, least on my mind. Last time we saw you on British Shore was in a losing effort against Tanoko, in which after the fight you ruled you had health issues. Do you feel any pressure to perform on the basis that this is the first fight back for British viewers to see you in the ring since that fight? Um, not, not any added pressure. So, um, if I won that fight and went into this fight, there'd still be the same amount of pressure. Obviously, it's a must-win fight, and every fight's a must-win fight. I think uh, you know you've got to prepare diligently for every contest that you go into, and and I have done this time. And uh, the pressure that's always there um, is, is there, and you know the main pressure on my behalf is the pressure that I put on myself, and uh, I perform better under pressure, and you'll see that. I want to get your comments on something I saw earlier, Jordan. Like, interesting in, in an interview I saw on Sky Sports Boxing Channel with Matthew Macklin, uh, he picked Reese Bellotti to win in your fight. He questioned the fight with Tanoka and he believes that there's something more to the defeat. He said he spoke to a few people and heard that you've been put down in the gym, you don't like body shots, questioning your toughness. Can you clarify if there's any truth in that, the rumours that Matthew Macklin heard? There's no truth in that. There's no truth. I've, uh... I've I've not actually seen it, so I'm not sure 100% what I said. But mm -hmm. a I've been in the gym with Dave for three years. He's never seen me touch down. He's never seen me hurt in the gym, spot mm -hmm. ever. And that's headshots or body shots. So you know, if I'm lying, then we'll see on Saturday night because Reese Blake throws plenty of good body shots, and uh, I don't need to prove myself. Uh, but I will. Is is it hard to predict your feelings after a fight? Because like, do you think after the win that you're looking for over Reese? It might feel like a chapter close on that Tanoka defeat and then you're back on track. Um, I think so. I think um, we'll be pushing on to big fights after this. Um, you know, it's a crossroads fight, but it's really important for us both to win. So, you know, we're guaranteed big fights after this and there's plenty of big names in the featherweight division and um, I'll be targeting them all. And just your prediction for your fight against Reese? Win at all costs. Thanks, Jordan. I'll um, jump back in, if I may. Sure. Yeah, Jordan, would you consider this, if all goes well on, on the night, would you consider this the best win of your pro career so far, or, or would it still be Ryan Doyle, perhaps? Um, it's an interesting question. I think, yeah, it probably would be the best win of my career on, on um, so far. Probably 
maybe not on paper because Doyle beat Blighty, but you know, stars make fights. And I think stylistically, this is a great fight. And it's a hard fight, and it's a fight that you know, because of the preparation and the build up, is uh, a fight where there's extra elements to it. And um, I think all things considered, this probably would be the biggest win of my career and, and probably the furthest um, that any other fight would have done. I want to know your feelings about the British title as well, because you've been brought up in a very traditional boxing background. Your dad's a, a well-known amateur trainer. Um, you've been at the Ingle Gym in the past as well, spent some time there. Is the British title something that you kind of dreamed about as a kid and that you really want to win? Because there's a bit of a log jam for that belt at the moment. To be honest, I've never even thought about winning the British title. It's not something that concerns me. I, I, it's a nice title. It's a nice title to win. And, um, you know, it's hard to keep hold of because you have to defend it three times to, to win it outright. But, you know, for me, whether I ever box for a British title or not, I'm not bothered, to be honest. Thanks. Uh, I'll just jump in quickly. Um, obviously, Balotti is quite a come-forward guy. Uh, in this fight, do you expect to get that side from him or do you expect for him to maybe change it up and try and box you? Obviously, that's a difficult task if he does, but, you know, when people look at the matchup, they think if he does just come forward at you, then you are going to be able to just outbox him. So what do you think uh, boxing style we're going to get out of him? Uh, I'm not sure. Um, I, I'd expect him to come forward and try and put as much pressure on as possible. I think in the Grand Delhi fight, he put a lot of pressure on, but it probably wasn't... Um, as effective as he'd like it, like it to be. Um, I expect him to more effectively pressure this time, having learned the lessons of that defeat. So um, I'd expect him to come and put a lot of pressure on and um, expect me to, you know, fold under that pressure. But it's something that we're not going to allow. And, um, you know, if he does come and try and box, then um, it will be a boxing match. And either way, I'm preparing for, to deal what's in front of me. Um, and I'm not doing that by looking at, specifically what he does. I'm doing that by uh, preparing myself to be as sharp and, and adaptable as possible in that ring. And just finally from me, obviously looking through your social media, we can see that you're a guy that does like to keep fit, live the life and uh, make sure that you're always sort of boxing ready. Was it difficult with the lockdown, obviously not having all the facilities available to be able to do this? Did you find that a difficult time or did you just sort of motivate yourself anyway? I motivated myself. Um, for me, it was hard. Um, to take the hard, hard pill to swallow the fact that my fight was cancelled in March. I was meant to be boxing on the Josh Kelly versus David Ivana saying card on the 28th of March and Boris Johnson come out and locked down the country that week. So a week before that fight, which was a long time coming for me anyway, um, you know, it was cancelled and that was a hard pill to swallow. So I had about three, four days where I felt sorry for myself and I um, didn't uh, stick to my diet and didn't do any training. I did a bit uh, because I can't stay off it. but. Um, I, you know, felt sorry for myself for a couple of days and I motivated myself and got back onto it. And, um, you know, we saw the lockdown coming maybe a week before the fight was up in the air. We didn't know if it would get cancelled or not, but, you know, we knew there was a chance. And when we knew there was a chance, the coach Dave said to me, um, you know, if the country does get locked down and we have to train at home, then we can use this time to uh, close the gap on people that are ahead of us and uh, further the gap of people that are behind us. And that's exactly what we did. Um, I motivated myself and made sure that I um, stocked up on the correct equipment that I needed for my training to make sure they adapted the best best way possible. And um, Dave was on the FaceTime um, with me and my dad, who trained me as an amateur, um, three times a week. We didn't miss one session. Um, same as my SNC coach, Danny Wilson of Boxing Science. We uh, was on FaceTime twice a week doing strength sessions and also doing conditioning sessions as well. So lockdown for me was a training camp. My nutritionist, Scott Robinson, was on the ball all the time. Um, you know, he provided me with um, every, every little bit of support that I needed. So, you know, it couldn't have gone any better for me. Brilliant. Thank you, mate. Got time for one more if there's any, just before we get going. Yeah, Jordan, if you don't mind, uh, I, just, I know you're super, super focused for your fight, but I just want to pivot your mind just briefly for uh, the headline fight in the pay-per-view of Dylan White versus Ander Alexander Povetkin. Can I get your thoughts on that fight, please? Um, it's a great fight. Um, Povetkin's a good fighter. I like his style. He's a good fat puncher. Um, but Dylan White's, you know, he's got a lot of momentum. He's... Um, is a bit of an animal. Um, he's, he's a nice guy and, and somebody that probably one of my favourite heavyweights because you know he's 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 there to fight. 
and uh, he'll always give it everything in, in every fight. So I'm expecting it to be a big fight, uh, an exciting fight, but I'm not sure who wins. I, I'd, I'd favour Dillian White just because, you know, he's he's very good and I like him. But it's, I, don't, I haven't really looked at all of the cars and, and thought, you know, oh, I'm looking forward to this fight or that fight. I just, I'm concentrating on my fight. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm super focused and, you know, after my fight, I hope everybody has a good fight. Um, but all I'm concerned about is uh, getting the job done on Saturday. Best of luck. Thank you. Thanks, Jordan. Cheers, Thanks, guys. Cheers for your time, Jordan, mate. Cheers.